I'm back! Welcome back. It's been a very long time. Um, it's been almost exactly a year, actually. But it has been a crazy, ridiculous year, and I just really... We just kind of haven't felt this. And now I do, again, we're both ready. Me and Hitch are both ready. So we're gonna come back and make you, help you make amazing food. Um, so... Where does where where does our crazy ridiculous year start? In February? In February, I guess. I was in the hospital for a week. Um because of a toe injury that it was ignored from my doctor. So I spent a week in the hospital. I had to have stents put in my leg, and I had to have my left pinky toe. Nope, my right pinky toe amputated. <laughs> They cried wee 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 all the way home. So there was some recovery from that, which you would think it wasn't that big of a deal because it was just a toe, but there was some recovery from that. Um, and then there were many other things that happened that kind of just didn't make us, kind of made us feel like we just didn't, we weren't interested. And then my glaucoma doctor Dr. Goulet, who was amazing, um, he said he had finally cleared all the secondary cataract from my eye and I was ready to go back and see my retina doctor because there was no reason that I shouldn't be able to have a little bit of vision. So I was super excited. So I went back to see my retina doctor and he was like, yeah, I think we can restore some usable vision for you now. Hitch said, okay, but how sure are you that you can do that? And he said, 70-30. So I figured those were pretty good odds. So I went to have this surgery that he said would restore some usable vision. Um, and I was awake through the whole thing. So I could actually hear the second when his overconfidence became his greatest weakness and he knew that he couldn't do it. The next day we took the bandages off and I am completely blind. I do have some light and dark perception, like I can tell that the lights are on right now, but that's about it. So I have been relearning how to do things again. Um, and I am coming to the conclusion that, especially for right now, one pot, crock pot, those kind of things, those kind of meals are going to be the best for me to make because they require, I don't want to say the least amount of work, but kind of, you know, like they, re, they don't require as much happening at one time if it's all in one pot. So for our first video back, I have decided to make you something very yummy. Um, today is Sunday. It is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And I am going out to eat for Thanksgiving this year. My entire life, my mother said, next year we're going out to eat. Next year we're not cooking, we're going out to eat. And then every year come Sometimes the day of Thanksgiving, we were running to the grocery store to buy a turkey and we never went out to eat. So I decided that this year, that's what we're doing. And me and Hitch and the boy and the girl are gonna go out and eat Thanksgiving dinner and it's going to be wonderful. I will probably be sad that we didn't cook and we will never eat out on Thanksgiving again, but one times, I mean, that's all I needed, right? Um, so we make Swiss steak. That's kind of an old, an old thing. I don't know if anybody really still makes Swiss steak. 
I grew up with my mom and my grandma who were both old ladies and they made it a lot and when I was a kid I thought this was the most horrible disgusting thing I'd ever had in my life um, but as they got older I realized this is really good so this is something easy that I'm going to be able to make and show you how to make and it's gonna be really really good so we're gonna start well first I'll tell you what we need we need to make this you need onion a whole onion. This is almost a whole onion. I cut a little bit off of it this afternoon to burn some onions for Hitch's lunch. Um, a small can of tomato paste. I guess they only come in small cans. Two cups of beef broth. Some tomatoes. Beef. What else do I have? Garlic and mushrooms. Um, traditionally this is made with round steak or cube steak. I just happen to have a London broil. Is that what this is? A London broil. Um, so we're going to make it in that. We're going to make it with that. I have also decided that since I can't see, it's probably a safe idea to really start using this cut glove that I have. So. Why did you put the black glove on over the cut glove? Well, so you don't get the cut glove dirty. And because also, sometimes I cut the fingers. And if I cut the fingers, I'm going to cut the black glove before I cut through the cut glove and cut my finger off. That's why. So we're just going to... Cut this in very uneven slices because that's how we do everything now. Very unevenly. <laughs> I hope you guys missed my, my crazy blind antics and are happy that they're back. We are happy that they're back. All right, so that's as cut as it's gonna get. While I am dredging this beef, I'm gonna put a scoop of coconut oil into my pan over here because we're gonna sear it and get some brown on it and get some yummy brown bits in the bottom of the pan. So I put some coconut oil in my skillet and get it heating so that it's good and hot when we're ready. So this is really easy. You're just, you were just going to dredge the beef in a little bit of flour um, just to help it get a little crispy on it. And once it's in the, in the pot, then it will also kind of help it thicken a little bit to make this yummy gravy. Cooking is so much slower now that I can't see. And all I've got in the, gosh, that is a huge piece. Is that gonna fit in the skillet? We'll find out, I guess. Um, all I have in the flour is just some salt and pepper. We didn't do anything fancy with it. Feels pretty coated to me. Get in the skillet for a minute. We just wanted to get a little brown and like I said, leave some leave some crispy bits at the bottom. I didn't get my tongs out. See how quick I found these tongs? Not too bad for a blind girl. These aren't even the right tongs. Mm, that's okay. This is what the 
things are very difficult to do when you can't see them. Okay, because I have no idea what this looks like. I am going to just say that it is brown, as brown as I want it. I'm going to move it to the side. I'm going to move my hot Dutch oven over here. I got this Dutch oven for Christmas last year. I love it so much. It's got another cast iron skillet that goes on top to make the lid. It's amazing. So we are going to, in here now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our two cups of beef broth. We are going to put just a little bit of cornstarch in here and stir it up. If we can find our spoon. Or we'll just get a different spoon. spoonful in there. Shake it around. Now we are also going to put in our tomato paste. Oh, my tomatoes. Forget about those two. And I want to whisk the tomato paste in with the beef broth just to kind of make it creamier and scrape up some of those bits that we made with the meat and the flour. Sorry, I know this is a terrible sound. That should be good. Let me grab my tomatoes. We got, um, we got these tomatoes from my cousin's farm last year and they were so good um, and they, there was a lot of them so we didn't really want them to go to waste and I have no idea how to can things so I just freeze everything. So we get those put in there and then we're going to put in our onions and our mushrooms and our garlic. This is something you could also make in the crock pot. Throw it in before you go to work and then when you come home it'll be done. I've never made it in the crock pot though so I wasn't really brave enough to try it. If you've made it in the crock pot and it works, let me know if it works. Let me know that it works. And we like a lot of garlic so I'm gonna put a couple good sized spoonfuls of that in there. And what else do I have here? Mushrooms. You can use the canned mushrooms if you like. Um, I did not like, so. I'm just gonna put them all in there. I don't figure the boy is going to eat this, so putting a whole bunch of mushrooms in it seems to like an okay thing to do. He doesn't like mushrooms. All right, so now we are going to get this Oh, nice and nestled in there with the veggies and the broth and the yummy. And don't worry, I clean my hands before I start cooking and my family knows that they don't eat anything in this house that I haven't had my fingers in. So and we're gonna take the top to our super fancy Dutch oven. Put it on like that. We're gonna stick this in the oven. This is going to take an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, I have the oven on 350, so I will check it in an hour and a half, and then I will come back if it's not done, if it's not tender enough, we'll give it that extra half hour. So we will see you in a couple hours. 
All right, so it's been about two hours. We're gonna take this out. I know it's done. It smells really good in the house. Oh my goodness. This is very heavy. How does it look? Does it look good? It smells good. All right, let's get our plate here. Get some of this out. This is another very difficult part about being the blind girl is plating the food. I've kind of gotten to the point where I, I cook the food and then I make them come in and make their own plates. So it's not so messy. Okay, let's make sure we get some mushrooms. That's another thing I do very, very often. I take empty bites from my fork. Ooh. So that's really, really good. So that's it. That's the Swiss egg. It was super easy. What, it took us like 20 minutes to put it together and an hour and a half to bake it. And that was it. Super easy and it's super yummy. So if you want to make this, um, someone will type up the recipe and put it on Instagram. I don't know who's going to do my social media now uh, because I can't do it. If anybody wants to volunteer as the social media person for Blind Girl Cooks pages, that would be fantastic. Um, so I think we're gonna do this like every two weeks now. I'm a very, very blind girl. So um, I think we're gonna do two weeks. So we will see you in two weeks with some other yummy, delicious recipe to make. Um, so share the video with your friends like it, comment on it, all those things that all the other YouTubers tell you to do. Um, Blind Girl Cooks on Instagram and on Facebook. And do we still have BlindGirlCooks.com? Yep. BlindGirlCooks.com on the interwebs. And I am going to go eat dinner now because as you heard it's 7 o'clock in the evening and it's kind of late. So have a good night. Bye.